Hey there YouTube, Batsy here, and I'm going to be bringing you guys some StarCraft 2 action today. Yes, that's going to be me as the red Protoss in the bottom right, versus top double A's as the blue Zerg in the top left. And this is going to be uh, just a standard PvZ I played on the European ladder because my uh, NA account ran out of bonus pool, and I still wanted to play with the, with the safety of the bonus pool, you know, I'm sure you guys have all had that feeling before. So... In this game, well, before I, before I describe this game, the European ladder has a lot less cheese. I don't really know the reason why, but it has a lot less cheese than the, the NA ladder. So in this game, I, I decide I'm going to go for uh, just a standard PvZ instead of having to go for some kind of weird, funky, safe, super safe build. I'm just going to go for what I want to do, what I like doing for my version of PvZ. And uh, th that, that means that I'm going for Void Rays because Void Rays are... They're just the best unit in the game. I don't really know what else to say. It's, it should be obvious at this point. So my, let's look at what my opponent's doing. My opponent is just droning up. He looks like he's going to go for either a 15 pull or a 15 hatch. And I decide that I'm probably going to go for a forge fast expand. You see I'm queuing a probe out here, and there's the forge. There it is. So I, there's not really that much to talk about before like battles really start happening, because we're both just going to be macroing up for about a good 8-9 minutes. That's usually how... Starcraft works. See, I'm gonna send a probe scout out. I'm gonna meet his drone halfway through, and I'm just queued up all over this map, aren't I? There we go, yeah, that's beautiful stuff. So finally, yeah, you see he throws his hatch down. We have a good 15 hatch, the safest way to be safe while still being economical. That's the 15, 15 pool. So I have a probe, and I meet him at the bottom of my ramp. And I don't know what this drone's doing, but I'm not gonna let him have his way. Cannon, or Forge is going to finish, and I'm going to start a cannon. Now, you see my probes getting here. I see that the spawning pool is about halfway done. I could have started in my Nexus first, but I, I'd rather just have my cannon, you know, because making the cannon also forces this drone away. Like, he can stay and harass my probe, but if I make a cannon, he, he just has to leave, and that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Notice he also has his hatch almost done. The standard way to really play a ZVP is to, once you see the Forge pass this man, you take your third. And that's the that's the way the cookie crumbles in this matchup. So my cannon's gonna finish, making a pylon, dropping my nexus, and things are looking good. In this game, I'm gonna be playing a, a pretty pretty greedy, but so is he. You know, we're, we're not really gonna make units until we have our tech trees decided. I mean, he, I'm sure he has a couple zerglings on the board. Let's let's check the units. Yeah, he has no zerglings yet, and I have more more probes than him. Anyways, he's gonna make a couple zerglings eventually. It's it's inevitable. So I start my gateway, you know, it's just the, you need the gateway if you want to get the Stargate, that's that's what they say, you know. And I got my probe on this watchtower. I don't really want to hold this watchtower because I'm sure there's going to be stuff at this watchtower. So I'm like, I'll save, I'll have this watchtower so nothing, nothing sneaky goes on. He's also going to try and scout with this overlord what I'm doing back here, see if I've taken my expansion. And I have made a pilot here for a full wall off. There's no way any roaches or zerglings are getting in. He's transferring drones down to his uh, natural, and my, my expansion's almost done. Also, uh, I missed with my probes. Go probes. Uh, I'll get in there eventually. So, gateway's done. Nexus is done. Let's just go jack check on these probes. Oh my goodness, I could have had like 20 more gas. And Cybercore. There we go. That's yeah, alright, it's okay. I end up having too much gas anyway, so always do. And the second gas is going to complete, and this is where I've pretty much decided that I think I'm going to win. Because if he was going to do something funky and go for like some kind of roach, I'll win. I would have already lost. So since it's obvious that isn't happening, I'm going to be going to be safe to do whatever I want, and that means go double Stargate. And I'm dropping my third gas to my natural. There we go. Just got to chrono boost out probes right now. Start my warp gate in a minute. There we go, and once I get about 150 gas and 150 more, I can drop a Stargate. Usually I drop my Stargates right here. It's the best, waste, best place to hide them, especially because I saw his overload over here. Gas is going to finish over there. And right here, yeah, we're just macroing up. You see he has a Zergling come up, and Zergling's going to get killed by the cannon. Cannon with one kills. It's pretty, pretty strong. Yeah, just got to Chrono Boost out those... Uh, I'll chrono boost more in a minute. <laughs> All 
All right, so you see I have a pro going over here. This is where I'm gonna make all my gateways. Because this, is, this isn't just a Void Ray Alwyn. This is like a Void Ray Zealot. So you see Sue Stargates are almost done. Oh man, you transfer those. That's one thing I can work on, transferring workers earlier. It's not that big a deal, but it's like min-maxing. Like, I don't really need the gas, but it's just something I need to work on. You know, you get better every game. That's one of the reasons you make, watch these replays. Yeah, so it's a Zergling. I'd also have my base, and then when I push out, let's check what else he's doing. He is dropping a spore. What is it? What's a good, what's a word? Hmm, like a spore palooza back here. He's, he probably knows that I'm going air. It should, or like DTs or something cheesy or something like that. So he has all these spore collars set up, but the way I do air isn't, I don't care about your mineral want, you know. I'm going to walk right up, right up your ramp, and I'm going to kill you with like a thousand voids. That's the plan. So you see I'm getting plus one, because plus one zealots eat zerglings up. Warp gate's almost done, and the void reproduction has begun. This is it. Let me see, I'm also dropping out all my gateways back here. I'm going to drop four and then two more, or sorry, I'm going to drop three and then two more for six. That's the, that's the magic number. He still has a significant supply lead, but I'm just starting to get saturated here. So once I get fully saturated, it's going to be, it's going to be a new ball game. Let's see what he's doing. He's dropping his, uh, he's getting his lair. Doesn't really, you don't really drop a lair, you pretty much morph into a lair. And he's getting his upgrades, he's getting missile attacks and uh, armor. Also going for one spine crawler. Where's the spine crawler? There it is. So void rays are in production. He still has his overward here. He hasn't really brought it across to see what I'm doing yet. And my warp gate finishes right about the time all my other gates finish. Notice I had to make these two late because I didn't have the minerals. It was more important to get the void rays out because the void rays are the main part of this army. The best part is when you tech switch into the ground army at the end when they go mass hydra. That's the that's the plan. Or you just keep making voids or phoenixes if they may, if they went spire. You know you just chrono phoenixes out. So, you see I was starting to get high minerals, but that's where the zealot warp ins come in. And gas is getting a little bit high, so I'm going to make a couple sentries too. Pretty much, oh, I also made a proton, I also get plus one air, and pretty much once that finishes, is that's when I start to do my push. I don't know what these guys are doing. I have a wrong valley? Nope. I was going to make a pylon, there we go, there we go. So, plus one ground's done, you know, I needed that. And plus one air is about a third of the way done. And these two other gateways finish. Make probably make a couple centuries soon right there, and I have this probe up here. You know, I made one proxy up here, and that was because if let's say this probe dies while making its real proxy, I can still use that proxy if I have to. Another good thing when you're making void rays, it's it's hard not to get supply blocked, or it's sorry, it's hard yeah to not get supply blocked. But I work, I do, I do a really good job this game of not getting supply blocked. So that's one thing that I'm proud of. Like. Eh, it can be hard, you know, when you're warping in like four or five zealots and you're making two void rays at a time. You gotta keep, you gotta keep on top of all those pylons. You see, he's going for spire. He doesn't really ever get to use it. You know, I actually didn't even know it was there until watching this replay. So that's that's kind of that's kind of funky. So void rays are still being made two at a time, getting chronoed out, and it's time for me to push. Gonna kill this circling. And my probe, you see, you dropped a pylon right there, a pylon right there, and I tried to drop a pylon up here, but I died. So these two pylons are going to be like the focal point of my attacks because even if it kills one I have one to fall back on so I have a bunch of zealots a couple sentries four or five stalkers and six void rays going in for the attack and I see all these roaches and I'm happy to see the roaches the hydras and eh, not so much but you know I'd rather see hydras than like corruptors you know he had the spire he should have made corruptors I think so I, I think he won that battle you know he has a 50 supply lead he escapes with his roaches, makes more hydras, and he should win. Yeah, so he took this base over here. This is technically his fourth. I think this is supposed to be his third. So that's going to throw me off, but I'll figure it out later. So I, I don't want to give up this pylon. I'd rather stand my ground, warp in some more units, and try and hold it. But that's just, uh... He's just going to go for this pylon after he kills my zealots. He doesn't want anything to do with my all-in. Yeah, there's the pylon down, but I did kill all his hydras, so look, I'm just starting to melt his roaches, turn my prismatic alignment on, and it just it just tears those roaches a new one. So he thought he'd be fine, he held off the all one, but you know what? There's another pylon over here that he didn't know about. So that's uh that's that's bad for him. It's bad. You see this drone over here is gonna go start to take his his technically his fourth, but it's his third. Or sorry. 
It is his third. Anyways, I'm killing these. I'm killing these uh, hydras, and he's killing all my ground army. But it's okay because once I kill all the hydras, it's fine. Just gotta make sure to only attack the hydras. So right here, I, I see the units coming up from his his third. It's so weird. I want to call it his fourth. So I realized I should probably park a couple units like right here, like a couple void rays to catch the reinforcements coming up if I'm going to be like sieging up his, his natural. So I have the zealots go kill the spore crawlers. I park a void ray back here to catch off these, these reinforcing hydras. There we go. And these zealots are just going to start going to town. Yeah, this void ray is the one I park. So I think I've overstayed my welcome. <laughs> We're a tied supply, but like, void rays can't beat the hydras off like four bases forever. Not like three void rays. So I decided I'd kill these last few units and I'd go back to my, uh, my spawn location. Yeah, I'm still making void rays, I'm still making zealots. But I've been really focusing on like microwing to keep my void rays safe. I decided I'll turn my prismatic climate on, I'll get through these two ebays. And they're not ebays, they're evolution chambers. I don't know why I call those ebays. I don't call forges ebays. Get rid of that over. Uh, wow, I didn't kill that overlord. That's sad. I'm sad. And I'll just get out of here, you know. I did my job. I got two kills on this. 16 kills and 15. Master Void Race. And he's going to finish his fourth. So you see the m big wave of zealots coming. My, my uh, minerals are getting kind of high. I missed like one warp in. That's pretty much what it comes down to. And let me see. You. I have. Alright, cool. I still have my rally points set. Every once in a while, like, I forget to like reset my rally point to kill the void ray it's rallied to. And that's one thing I just gotta work on. Alright, come on army, let's go win. So I decide that I'll just go win right now, and he's trying to catch me off right here. So none of us really know, well now he knows that I'm here, but I don't know that he's there. So I'm like, where is this army? And he decides to come back, maybe. He's gonna take the long way, and he catches a void ray out. <laughs> And I'm like, oh wow, those are a lot of hydras, and he catches another void route. So I decided to stall with these guys. You know, I'll just stall, try to kite him back, pull him a little bit towards my pylon. He doesn't fall for it. But uh, he's going to eat my zealot army, the, the brunt of the zealot army. Oh wow, I could have microed that just a little bit better. He's going to eat... Yeah, these, these hydras are just not meant for this world. There's too many void rays, too many zealots. This is where the tech switch and the mass zealot totally pays off. So right here, you see, I'm going to go for a huge flank. Here, 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 here. And I'm just going to make this a roach Armageddon. I went from four different sides. Well, technically like five. Right here with the voids. Here with the zealots. Here, here. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five. No, that's four. That's four. Let's say it's four. It was a four-way sandwich of just roach, roach destruction. You see, I have a huge supply lead. Almost double his supply now. So I'm going to come up, I'm going to kill this eBay again. Dang it, it's not eBay, it's the evolution chamber. And I'm just going to win the game. I don't really care if you have a spore call or like two hydras, you know, because it's still game. I have too many void rays. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. Eight void rays. And a full army of zealots. And he calls Chi Chi. Even if he doesn't like leave the game yet, it's still game. So that was the game I played on the European ladder this morning, and I was pretty proud of the way it turned out. You know, a couple, I could have microed things a little bit better, but I really liked how I trapped all those roaches at his, uh, well, near my proxy pylon. Let's, let's pause it. All right. Yeah, I was pretty happy how I trapped everything. Oh, I reset it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the, the 1v1 PvZ. That's usually my style versus Protoss versus Zerg, and... Well, I guess I'll see you guys next time.